Hi, Jason Schrott here from Rapido Trains, Inc. I'm sitting in my new groovy 1970s office. It's purple. Yes, Dan, it is purple. But this video is not about my purple office. This video is all about the RDC. The Bud RDC, or rail diesel car, revolutionized passenger train travel in North America in the 1950s. Rather than abandon unprofitable conventional passenger train services, the large railroads replaced them with RDCs, which were a much more economical means of providing passenger train service. There are two main body styles for the RDC. The Phase 1 RDC, delivered between 1949 and 1955, has a more squared-off appearance with headlights on the front face below the roofline. The Phase 2 RDC, delivered between 1956 and 1962, has a more rounded roof and the headlights above the roofline. This allowed diaphragms to be added so passengers could move between cars. Now, as you know, Rapido Trains Inc. is all about accuracy. For our HO scale model of the RDC, we've gone the extra mile to make sure that it's right. We did a 3D scan, not just of one RDC, but of both the Phase 1 and the Phase 2 versions of the RDC. And we recorded the sounds of an RDC with its original Detroit Diesel 110 series engines. Have a look, this is how we did the scan. I'm here inside Via Rail RDC 2, number 6215. It's very, very cold. Sitting beside me is Jocelyn Paquette, and he is from Creaform 3D. They do 3D scans of real things. Say hi, Jocelyn. Hello. <laughs> Tell me, what exactly is involved in the process of doing a 3D scan of something like a train? Uh, so what we're using now, it's, uh, it's called a long-range scanner. Uh, so it's a laser scanner. Um, basically, it's like using a, a laser pointer. Uh, so every time you put the laser on a surface, it's going to record the position of the point uh, in relation with the origin inside the scanner. So the scanner will repeat that operation several times. So we're talking about maybe a million points in five minutes. And uh, so we're going to record different images of, this, of, the, of the cart or the train from different positions and then try to reassemble everything together uh, to get a nice uh, 360 view uh, of, the, of the, the cart. Right, and then the, the designers, they would then have to take that and sort of, do they trace it? They make a copy of it in a 3D design program? Uh, actually, they're gonna use the point cloud or the mesh, depending on what they like to work with. Uh, they're gonna use it as a, as a reference to start building surfaces and uh, solids on top of it, basically. So now trains are not just what you scan. You scan everything, right? Preform is more uh, specialized in metrology and uh, inspection. So we usually work with uh, uh, mechanical parts, production parts, and uh, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So we can do reverse engineering. We can do inspection. So just making sure that the parts are uh, are uh, good for production. Um, we do a lot of work with artists. So they just need a three D model. We can send our file to 3D printing as well. So it's a yeah, wide uh, variety of... Uh, of uh, okay, so get this, get this. 
we can take the point cloud file of the RDC and 3D print a full RDC if you have a printer big enough. <laughs> yeah, well, we will probably do it in the smaller scale. <laughs> So the engineers at Creaform 3D traced the scan of the RDC and the result was a CAD file, computer aided design file, which our engineers could then use. So what we really did was we actually took the design, the scan of the full RDC, the RDC phase one and phase two, we shrunk them down to HO scale and based our model on that. So the dimensions, all the measurements, the ribs, the, the curves on the top, everything matches the original on the model because we literally started with the scan and designed our model around it. Um, the rest of the RDC though was, was designed conventionally. So Bill and I went through the RDC, we photographed everything, we measured everything, and then Bill spent about two months doing drawings of every underbody component, the pipes, the seats, the armrests, everything. And with about uh, three, four months of communication back and forth with our factory engineers, we designed a complete HO scale model. Now you may have seen the video of our first ever recording of a locomotive back in 2009. Way back then we went to the Conway Scenic Railroad in North Conway, New Hampshire and we recorded the FP9A locomotive which was really, really well received. Now six years later, we were back. To record an original RDC with its two original engines, we went back to North Conway in October 2015. The weather was perfect, the colors were beautiful, there was a lot of purple, and we got the recordings we needed. Check it out. Hey Court, how are you? Good, how are you? Oh, I haven't seen you in six years, you haven't changed your clothes. I have not changed my clothes in six years, that is correct. Hi there, Jason Schroff from Pio Trains Inc. along with Court here for the Conway Scenic. Today, instead of recording the FP9A locomotive, we're recording the RDC! That is awesome! Isn't that awesome? It's awesome. Okay, he is, he's cheering on the inside, all your line from last time. There's no sound difference in one, okay? So your RDC is going to start moving. There's no sound difference. It's going to sound the same as idling. Okay, let's go into two.
It's been an amazing day here on the Conway Scenic. We recorded the sounds of this RDC with its original Detroit Diesel 110 engine. And your HO scale RDC from Rapido Trains Inc. will be the only RDC model in existence that has the accurate sounds recorded from a real RDC. It's going to be amazing. my basement is much easier. <laughs> well, Court, that's been an incredible experience. Uh, did you grow up with these things? Like, you experienced the RDCs from the, from the past? I did. I, I lived in Concord, Mass, and I used to take it from Concord to Boston on the b and On the b and that was, and so is this sound original to you or is it all changed now? Oh, absolutely. They all sound the same. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Now, driving this thing, is it like driving a, a big uh, an FP9 or an Alco or something like that? No, it's just like driving a school bus. <laughs> That's right. So which is easier, driving the RDC or the school bus? The RDC. <laughs> you don't have to steer. Don't have to steer, right? But you still got to worry about people running in front of the train, right? Oh, yeah. Right, exactly. And these things used to have cages in front of the windows. You know? That's right. So things would bump in. Anyway, it's been a great experience here recording the RDC. Uh, the model is going to be beautifully accurate because you are the engineer. So everyone, when you ride your RDCs on your model railroad, you got to put a little model of court inside the RDC driving, okay? So here we are. Uh, Jason Schrod, Thomas Blampin, and Court Greg signing off from North Common, New Hampshire. See you later. These are like really comfortable. These are 1970s CN Club Deluxe seats. I mean, this is it, right? I don't see an afro. I don't see mutton chops. Hey, you know, I am wearing a uh, orange corduroy belt. Do they even do the whoosh as you walk? They in? do. They, oh, crap, we're recording. Only Rapido goes to this much effort to ensure your model RDC, or school bus, as Cork called it, is 100% accurate in looks and in sounds. I'll be back in another video to show you the model and all its features, but in the meantime, please reserve your Rapido HO Scale RDC today, either directly from RapidoTrains.com or from your favorite hobby store. Listen, we build these to order. If you don't order by the deadline, you may not get one. Thanks for watching, and remember, it's all about the RDC. Aubergine, that's what that color is. <laughs>